Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hi guys, sorry Jim's lights on. I hope it's not affecting anybody. I had such a an amazing day actually. It was um, the first day that I left the wounds open because I started the antibiotic last night and I know the doctor said keep the wounds uncovered but I wanted to make sure I had an antibiotic before I did that because germs and smoke and ick, you know. Um, it of course was especially cold in the room today and I was freezing so I have on like the long thigh high socks that I just stopped. I said, stop this one right below the boo boo. And the other one I pulled all the way up because freezing. Excuse me. But anyhow, everything is just going so swimmingly. Wounds are healing. Do you remember when I, I kind of feel like I don't, I'm not really sure if I mentioned it in a vlog or to a friend. So if I did mention it in a vlog, this, this comparison, you've heard it already. But if not, this is the comparison. Do you ever fill up your tank with car with gas? It's full. The first quarter of a tank look feels like you're driving for 400 miles. Then the last three quarters is like 100 miles, because it's it's it does impact the gauge does it is impacted by the pressure in the gas can. I understand that that's why. However, it feels like it goes like it's like everything's going slowly, and then it goes boom, 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 boom. Well, the boo-boos happen that way. I had really, really slow rashes. It's almost like, it is like almost the equivalent of it doubled every time. So every day it doubled in, um, in, I don't know, illness, I, in range. I don't know what I'm saying, but it doubled in, in, not just size, but in severity. So it started off with something that looked like prickly heat, like just a regular little, like little rash. And then it became like, slowly became more and then slowly became more and then slowly became more till eventually it was like more 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 and that's how it that's how it developed my rash developed that way with the same token I think it's I think it's clearing up that way I think it's like real slow going in the beginning and then it's just going to be like boom 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 better 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 so I am very very happy um I had a great day I know it's Easter Saturday. I mean, you're watching this on Easter Sunday. So happy Easter for those of you who celebrate Easter. He is alive. He is risen once again. I um, did just get like little treats from my family and like site to store pickups and stuff. Uh, when we went to Target and when we went to Walgreens in Washington. Plus, I've just been picking up little things like each time I go grocery shopping. Something looks good for mom. You know, a snack for Jim and snack for mom like that. Um... Jim bought a ham for dinner to make for dinner tomorrow. I should have asked him to grab a sweet potato. I don't know what I was thinking. Dang it. Um, but I think I'm going to ask him to make macaroni and cheese because we like the ham with the gluten-free macaroni and cheese. And we have gluten-free elbows and the Velveeta sauce from the Dollar Tree. That's a trick if you guys, you know, um, make want to make really good macaroni and cheese easy, you know, or for the kids to do it. If, you know, if you're teaching your kid how to cook, and they know how to make pasta. Instead of teaching them how to make an elaborate cheese sauce, you can just get the Velveeta squeeze packs. Um, and they have them in jalapeno. Don't buy the jalapeno if you don't want them. Make sure you check. <laughs> anyway, so tomorrow's not going to be like super elaborate. He is going to make me some. I'm, I'm going to have gluten tomorrow because I asked him if I can have a few pierogies for breakfast. And it's just been like an Easter tradition. Um, he's been eating them like kind of regularly on the weekends and I haven't really had partaken in any, but I just like comfort food wise, I just feel like I need it. And, um, he bought kibasi and pierogies when have sausage. I would love for him to fry up some bacon, but I know that that's like not his favorite thing to do, even though you can bake it in the oven. Um, and he doesn't really, he's not crazy about it, but I haven't been able to eat bacon for a while. So it's just not something that's been on our radar. So yeah, tomorrow we're just going to have... We'll have um, ham for dinner. I almost wish we could have like a brunch, like early. You know, just put the ham on at 10 o'clock in the morning and we'll just eat brunch. And pick on it all day or whatever. But he bought a big one and I was like, who are you buying a big ham for? Um, But when he went to Kroger, that's like kind of what they had, you know. Um, Let's see. I organized my medical supplies which I'm so super freaking sing and happy about because Jimmy was like let's just put them back in the paper bags and I was like but it's very frustrating because I can't see what I have left and if I need to order something I don't want you pulling the last pad out of the box and being like oh that's no more pads because that's not going to help me I don't I can't get them right away or anything 
So I got the thing that used to hold the towels in my bathroom and we stacked it all up in there with all the extra supplies. Now granted, when I get more supplies, we're gonna have to do a little rearranging, of course. And I bought all of these like inexpensive gauze pads at Amazon that said that they were cotton and I don't think they're cotton. They feel like they're polyester. However, I was going to just return them, but then I was like, oh, that'd be so great for Halloween DIYs because they were so inexpensive, but I'll see. I haven't decided yet. Um, but like that fills up like a big compartment. And then I'm trying to say is that when I take, show you the picture that they're going. So, um, what else? Yeah, I felt very fulfilled. I, I reorganized my medical bag because we took the wound care bag to Washington when we stayed overnight. And, um, you know, just from like going to the doctor's office and him giving us stuff and going to the you know, hotel and doing the stuff. I just wanted to reorganize it, stock it up. I like to do that on the weekends. I usually do that on Sunday to restock the bag and make sure everything's in there that we need. Just to basically redo what supplies we need if we need to run to the store for anything. Um, but actually, everything is so far really good. I am out of the combine pads. I started using these. I got them on Amazon. I won't buy these ones again. The insides just fall apart. These just fall apart. And obviously, look, I know when you get the cheapest supplies, when you're cheap and poor and, you know, poor man pays twice. But my sister's got a whole box of supplies coming. So I think we're just going to use up what we have, even though it's reverting back to an old way we used to do stuff. Um, we're going to just um, do that. We're just going to revert back just the, for the one, two days or whatever. Um, the visiting nurse service is going to be bringing me wound care supplies, which is awesome. So no more investing money in that, um, which I'm super, super happy about. Um, let's see. Hmm. I can drink, I can eat Jello again. I just bit my lip. Um. I don't know if I've even told you, but I wasn't able, the jello, like, I don't know if it was just like the citrus, like, well, cause it wasn't just lime jello. It was the cherry and the, and the, there was something in the jello that was uh, burning my mouth. It was a little too acidic. So today I was like, let's get some strawberry jello. And I had it and it's delicious and I ate it and I was good. I was like, oh my gosh, jello again. There's jello in my life again. Do you guys ever have jello with vanilla pudding? That's a good combination. I can't believe I did that. Is it bleeding? My lips still are very purple. They're very thin. The medication makes them very thin. They are still cracking and drying. Uh, even without being on the medication, I do have kidney cancer. So my, my dehydration level is a lot different than everybody else's. Like, I don't know if I have to drink even more water than I'm drinking. Do you feel like sometimes I'm going to float away? Um, Jim made the most amazing every plate that we tried so far. I actually said to him, a couple of weeks ago, I ordered mushroom risotto. And I said, I bought this for me, to make, for you to make this for me when I can have it a couple of nights while you guys are having something else. But mom um, had gone out to lunch with her friends and didn't want dinner. So Jim ate the other half of the risotto and I was like, man, that was really good. And I tolerated it. Well, tonight, I this week, I had ordered, um, Jim, what's it called? French onion gnocchi? Jim? What's that? Tonight was called French onion gnocchi? French, uh, um, French beefy onion gnocchi or something like that? I forgot exactly. No, it's okay. I don't remember beefy being in there. I think it's French onion gnocchi. Like French onion soup. Um, so delicious. So delicious. And I was like, this is an easy one to reproduce. Which we're always looking for like easy ones to reproduce. Some have like, every plate is $4.99 a meal. When you first start up, it's as low as like $2 a meal. But for $4.99 a meal, sometimes those elaborate meals you have to get all the ingredients. It's like, you're, it's not a bargain, you know? I mean, it's, it's a bargain to buy the every plate, not the actual ingredients is what I'm trying to say. Like we get meals for two because I'm not really partaking in most of them. So they get meals for two and to get like a half a pound of ground beef, 
two, two or three rusted potatoes, four or five pieces of zucchini, it will come to more than ten dollars. And that's what I'm saying. So, um, I'm not. I don't. This is not a sponsored video or anything. I'm just telling you it's working for my family right now because I am not able to cook, and Jim's still working full time, and there's just a lot on his plate. So every plate has really been helping. He can look at the time it takes to cook something and he knows when he needs to start to eat in plenty of time to have clean up before bed and that type of thing. Uh, not have to think about the ingredients, not to have to concentrate. Now, one thing I was telling my sister, I said, I don't know what they do to their vegetables, but they last a hell of a lot longer in the refrigerator than when you buy them at the grocery store. I don't know if the grocery store just has like too much cross contamination of other vegetables or whatever, but... Every plate, their their vegetables stay, not forever, obviously, because they're still vegetables, but they stay so much longer than when the ones you buy at the supermarket. So I think Jim went today to Kroger when he bought the ham. I think he got some extra vegetables um, to re reproduce some of the meals. Um, like mom loves the roasted zucchini. She's in love with roasted zucchini now, the way that they make it in some of the every plate dishes, which I'm happy about. Anytime I can get a green in her, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um I should put a link to the every plate like it's like a, like a refer, refer a friend type of thing if you guys wanted I often get like these free boxes and like give a free box away and I'm like I I gave one to my sister she tried it she's like it was all right she's like I didn't think it was a great bargain and I was like well you know she's like if I had to pay for it and that's when we started talking about it my sister is fantastic she's like First of all, she's so freaking beautiful. She's so freaking smart. And it's just like, she's so worldly. She's, it's just crazy. And she's so zen sometimes. And she used to like, like you can, I know from knowing her and I love her so much that she's zen because she's been through it. You know what I'm saying? And when you've been through it, you're like, well, this is nothing compared to what I've been through. Okay. I'm not going to cry. Okay. She was talking to me about, we talk about like skinny girl psychology of eating, the way skinny girls eat. She goes, do you ever notice skinny girls chew their ice cream? And I was like, I said, no, I never did. I can't chew my ice cream, my, my teeth or whatever. She's like, no, it's not even like they chew it, but like they move it around their mouth more. Like we lick and swallow, lick and swallow, lick and swallow like fat people. I said, oh, I see what you're saying. I said, that's funny because that's why I like when, when I didn't have mouth issues. That's why I like to have ice cream with things in it nuts chocolate chips or whatever because it slows me down eating it and it lasts longer so she's like yeah like that and then we always talk about like skinny girl philosophy you know you know we eat like because we were poor and it was really eat or be eaten i'm not joking it's it's you know first up best fed that's like we said in our in our family um my sister sat next to my older brother who would like could definitely just steal food right off of her plate so she eats like 100 miles an hour you know um we talk a lot about, like, the psychology of skinny girl eating um, versus fat girl eating. Even fat girl, like, she's the one who taught me about fat girl directions. And I was like, what? Or fat people directions. She's like, yeah, when you give directions to somebody, you go, like, go up to the road, make a ride at Wendy's. You're going to go past the Long John Silver's and then past the Burger King. And on your right-hand side, right next to McDonald's, is where the smoke shop is. And I never realized it until she pointed it out to me. And I'm, it was, like, 100%. And if you're a big person who loves food or even a skinny person who loves food and you give directions like that you're probably cracking up because it's 100 percent true so we have a lot of that we're learning as we're older we're learning all these different things my aunt mary goes back to like my aunt mary my aunt mary is a beautiful human being but quite a while back my cousin she asked my cousin um if she wanted something to eat and my cousin was like, no, I'm not hungry. And she was like, what does that feel like? And Aunt Mary, my mom and my Aunt Mary, they grew up, like, we grew up poor. They grew up, like, destitute poor. Like, super poor. So they have a whole, like, again, that philosophy of, like, you're in starvation mode all the time, regardless of whether or not you're hungry or eating. You just want to, like, oh, fill the camel, you know, fill the hump. So, um, it's just, like, you can see it's not only inherited... It's also like learned behavior. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not only learned behavior from your parents, but it's learned behavior from 
the situation. You know, we learn from our situation. Um, when my brother, when I went into high school, when I was a freshman? Yeah. No, not when I was a freshman. When I was a sophomore. When I was a sophomore, my little brother started going to school too. And because my little brother was going to school and we were at a certain poverty level, we started getting free lunch. And in my high school, it was also free breakfast. So you guys know I kind of like dropped, started not going to class like halfway through um, sophomore year. But I was hanging out at school because I got free, I got to eat. I got free breakfast and free lunch. So I would hang out in the art class. I'd cut social studies and I'd hang out in the art room. I think I told you guys this story before. I wish I knew where the videos were because I would just be like, go back and look at the video. But my history teacher just like embarrassed the hell out of me and I stopped going. That was weird. My digital assistant just came on my phone like I said something. Oh, I might have said seriously. Anyway. Um, so he embarrassed me and I stopped going. His, his, he was eighth period and I stopped going to social studies and I would just hang out in the art room. And then the same thing with English. English was uh, seven, sixth period and I would stop going to English because I, you had to read a lot and I didn't read. You know, I just, I, the, I know now. I know now, without self-diagnosing, it's it was ADHD, and that was one of the stumbling blocks that I had in high school, was learning, was like reading, and I still have it. I can't read a novel, <laughs> because I, um, it doesn't absorb, because my brain is doing 20 other things at the same time. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I just did my nose spray, so it's like starting to like want to loose everything up, so forgive me, but, um, so... Because I was getting free breakfast and free lunch, I hung out at the school. I just hung out. I hung out in the art class and library and the, in the lunchroom. I never even went outside to, like, the courtyard. I literally was, like, scared. I was, like, a little geeky girl who's, like, I'm not going to get in trouble if I go off the school grounds. There is a, a, a deli sort of, like, I don't know, what would you call it? Like, maybe a smoke shop at this point or, like, a, car, a stationary store called the Jelly Bean. That was by the school. That's what we used to go. The kids used to go all the time. I'd never been there in four years of high school. There was a Carvel and a McDonald's kind of across, just down the pond. Like, there was a pond. Go across the street, halfway down the block, there was a pond. And across the back street from the pond was a McDonald's and a Carvel. And I never let, went there. I went off. I went off to lunch one time with my friends and one time with my sister. I left campus, like out of the four years in high school or three and a half or when you had it all together, maybe it was just three years of high school. So anyway, um, so we do have this, like this, this not only learned from our parents' behavior. Cause my, you know, like again, my mom, my father grew up with his family owning restaurants. So my father grew up with the mentality of feed everybody. My mother grew up with, Eat when you can, because you never know when food's going to come. I'm sorry, is this rash showing? I don't want to be private. I don't want to be, like, grossing people out if you can see it. Okay. So my mother grew up with eat when you can, because you never know when your next meal's going to come. So not only did I learn those behaviors from my parents, but I also learned from myself. You know, when there's food, eat it, because you don't know when there's not going to be food again. So anyway, um... We talk a lot with my sister about, like, skinny girl eating versus um, fat girl eating. But it's really what it probably is more is poor person eating versus rich person eating. Because um, even now that we're both not, like, super poor or, like, oh, neither one of us are really. But that we can afford good food, it's still, like, a hard mentality to get over to spend the money on the food. You know? Um, so... One of the things I was saying to her was, like, she's always talking to me about skinny girl versus fat girl. And I'm like, we got to get out of frugal. We got to get out of frugal land, you know. And my father was frugal because we were poor. Plus, then he's, like, he was cheap a little bit and cheap on certain things. You know, like, it's okay to spend, you know, $80 on a reel, but not $80 on groceries. No, I'm just kidding. Always $80 on groceries. My father would spend so much on food because he wanted to feed everybody. Um, but it's that mentality where you're like, if you're cooking for two, groceries sometimes tend to cost more than eating out. 
I mean, not always, because it depends on where you decide to eat out. Like, for four ninety nine, we can go to Steak and Shake, except Steak and Shake's closed. We can eat, we can all eat for four ninety nine at Steak and Shake. If we go through the drive thru, then we have to eat at home. But that is fast food. And Steak and Shake doesn't have their salads right now. They haven't really had them since the pandemic. So it's not like there's even great choices. You know, Chili Mac, not a great choice. The chili hot dogs, they're good food. It's steak burgers, so I'm not trying to say it's not good food, but they don't even have their royal anymore, you know, which is the uh, bacon and eggs on a burger. Oh, they don't have it here in the, the steak and shake we went to. <laughs> um, so it's just like you can eat for four ninety nine at, like, fast food, but you can't eat, like, at a restaurant. You can't sit down at, or order from a steak restaurant or from, like... A, a diner for four ninety nine and eat a healthy meal, but for four ninety nine with a little bit of effort because you do still have to cook it, um, you can eat this nice healthy, real food sort of situation. Now they do show, they do charge you for shipping, so it probably comes out to it depends on how many meals you buy a week. I think it's a nine ninety nine flat rate shipping. I think I have to I have to remember. It just I know it comes on the bill and, um, but. The when you when you factor that in and we get five meals a week, that's only two dollars in deliveries for meals. So maybe it's making it a five six dollar meal instead of a five dollar meal and still worth six dollars. Now when we do a premium upgrade, some of the things are like premium steaks, you it becomes ten dollars a person or um or like eleven dollars a person, but again, you can't go into Colton's and get a steak for eleven dollars. Um I mean, you can, but it's a little steak. <laughs> I think nine ninety nine is the cheapest, is their six ounce sirloin. So, but anyhow, I digress. Uh, but it's definitely worth it. If your time is money, Jim's time is very limited. His, his, uh, he's pushed real thin to get all the things done that he needs to. And this has just been an amazing help. So I don't know that this ended up being about every plate, this video, but it was, uh, good to come back to where we started because a lot of times my brain fog won't let me remember what I was getting to the point of. I'm glad you came on the ride with me to find another way back to the point of this story. <laughs> but listen, I love you. If nobody's told you today that you're loved, you can always come by and hear how much I love you. And I'm sorry if the light reflecting off my glasses is bothering you as much as it's bothering me. I apologize. I'm trying to I was talking to Lisa on FaceTime, and I'm like, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I can't. Every time I look over, and it's flashing in my eyes. As always, you guys take care. God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye.